consider this list of numbers. One, one half, one third, one quarter, one fifth, and so on. This is the idea of a sequence. A sequence is just a list. There's a first element, a second element, a third element, and you have this ordered list that goes on for forever. Another example might be this one, one half, two thirds, three quarters, four fifths, and so on. You can sort of see what the pattern is. Indeed, there's a third example, which is like minus one, one, minus one, one, minus one, one, that goes back and forth that way. The point is, as long as I have a first element, a second element, a third element, and so on, I have a sequence. It doesn't even need to follow a nice pattern like these ones. For example, the digits of pi, three, one, four, one, five, and so on, that forms a sequence that is never going to be repeating, that has no nice predictable pattern to it. And then my general notation is to use a sub i notation. So I could have a listing of different elements. The first element we call a 1, the second element a 2, the third element a 3, and so on. And then the completely general way to talk about this is to do braces with a sub n in the center, where n is thought of as just some natural number, and that's my shorthand for the entire sequence. Now, what we've done here is pretty good, where I've just listed the elements, and maybe you can see a pattern, maybe you can't, depending on how complicated it is. But often we want to be a bit more explicit about that. So the other way that I can represent sequences is, is so-called explicitly defined, where I say the a sub n, and I just tell you what the expression is for that. So in this example, I'm saying a sub n is just 1 over n. So for example, if n is equal to 1, a1 is 1 over 1. Indeed, if I put in 2, then a2 is 1 over 2, so a half. And in general, it's going to be 1 third, 1 fourth, 1 fifth, 1 sixth, and so on. So if I have an explicit formula like this, I can come up and list out the elements. But what about the other way around? Uh, suppose I give you the second example that I had before this. 1 half, 2 thirds, 3 quarters, 4 fifths. Does that sequence have an explicit formula? Why don't you pause and see whether you can find it? When I look at it, I look specifically at the numerators, I see the first term's got a 1 in the numerator, the second a 2 in the numerator, the third a 3 in the numerator. But in the denominator, it's all 1 higher than that. The first term has a 2 in the denominator, the second term has a 3. So the generic formula for this is going to be an n on the top, but an n plus 1 on the bottom. So indeed, in general, we will say that a sub n is n over n plus 1. You give me any natural n, and we can figure out what the term in the sequence is going to be. Okay, now let's go and look at the third example. This is the example where we had the minus 1 and the 1 alternating back and forth. So my goal is to find an explicit formula for this. So if I plug in, say, n equal to 4 into some formula for the a sub n, I'll get out, in this case, just 1. Well, what can I do? I, I want something that alternates between the minus 1 and the 1 back and forth like this. So... What about this one? Minus 1 to the power of n. For all odd powers of n, like for example n equal to 1, minus 1 to the power of 1 is just going to be minus 1. Minus 1 to the power of 3 is minus 1. Minus 1 to the power of 5 is minus 1. But for even powers, it becomes plus 1. Minus 1 squared to the 4 to the 6, all those are plus 1. So indeed, this explicit formula matches this original sequence that I'm talking about. Now, this video just established some of the basic terminology and ideas of sequence that's really going to be the base for the next big portion of calculus that we're going to do. But in the next video, we're going to talk about the limit of a sequence and think about one more way to conceptualize what a sequence is.